so why did you? Because I I know you, you. I saw you do some stuff with um, Tommy and Danny's uh, their yeah. solo their stuff so stuff. But why did you? When they fell out, why did you? How did you pick this? What did you decide to do? Because they they're who brought me in. Um, remember I, Denny, remember I didn't even. Me, Tommy, and Denny was that's who I knew. See, Val knew Jay from childhood. Uh, and Denny from childhood. You know what I mean? So. I was like, at that point, moment, it came, who do you trust? You know what I mean? And I really didn't know Jay that well, but I didn't trust him that much either. Okay. There's, there's some things. The second, I remember the second Club No View, I, I, I remember that mm -hmm. from 88, but it just didn't do mm -hmm. anything. Yeah, it wasn't the same. It, was, no. it, wasn't, it, it wasn't the same production. It wasn't, wasn't the same musician, same production, or it wasn't even the same... Uh, uh, Direction, you know, put it this way. If you remove the producers who produced the first track and the lead male vocalist from the first from the first album, if you take those things, those elements away, it's, it's going to be different. You know what I mean? And that's and that's what you had because, you know, they 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 fell out. Um, you also changed. You seem to change labels in that transition. How did you go from like Warner Brothers to Atlantic? What happened? No, but there? but but then Samuel said he 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 left after that first album. So you did you get involved? Did I get involved with what? No, no. So did didn't um, Benny not say okay? This is you know you guys have just gone platinum plus. We need to make sure you guys are. Or did he just step back? <laughs> See, Jay. I don't know what kind of conversations Jay had with Benny, but I think I think Benny told I think Jay told Benny we were kind of like the problems or whatever because I don't know what conversations that Benny had with Tommy and Benny, but I didn't have any conversations with Benny at that time because, like I said again, I was it was like if you were to if you were the company or you, whatever you had you, the people who brought you in that you've been the closest with that's where you're going and you know what I mean. I I believe that if Valerie would have been on the same side as Val as myself and Tommy Denny, I believe Benny would have stepped in then. Okay. And said, Oh, wait a minute, hold on. We got the whole group over here, man. You're supposed to be just independent label. You're not even supposed to be in the group. Basically, he wasn't even supposed to be in the group. He was just supposed to be me, Valerie, Tommy, and Denny. Oh. Yeah, Jay was the Jay was the independent label. He was the label. Connected with Benny. Yeah. He was helping write you know, write the lyrics and stuff like that, but he wasn't supposed to be in the group, <laughs> okay, until we did Heavy on My Mind. I mean, why you treat me so bad? And he decided that he, you know, he just wanted to be doing something. You know, I don't just want to be, you know, this, the label guy. I want to be, you know, do this, this, and this. So they allowed him to come on that track, and that's how he actually got himself in the band to be in the group okay. when we performed and stuff like that. So it, it was, I believe Benny would have, and like I said, again, I don't know the conversations, but I can only imagine that Jay must have told Benny that, you know, we were being, you know, uncooperative, whatever, you know, whatever the situation yeah, yeah. was. But when we got out to answer Steve's questions, when, when we left that, Steve, uh, it was like 87, 88. They were in, in the studio working on different stuff. And I was in the studio doing backgrounds on different projects they had. They had a production album that they did with a bunch of different artists. Mm -hmm. And that's when In Vogue, I met In Vogue. We came in, we were singing backgrounds on different projects that they were doing. In Vogue wasn't even called In Vogue yet. And uh, they were shopping deals, production deals around. And then David Lombard, who was managing them at the time and myself, he wanted me to go to some of the uh, meetings with the different labels. So we met with different labels. Um, and then we met with Sylvia, who was over Atlantic. Well, actually, she was over. She was the head of WIA, which is which is Atlantic Warner and Electra. Yeah. She was the over all of them at the same time. So we went, <clears throat> and they were pitching some of the stuff to her. You know, like we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, blah blah blah. Myself and Vogue and the Funky Nation. It was like a, a three or four piece band that they were working on, which was kind of like um, George Clinton and them. You know, it's mm -hmm. like funk. And when we got there, we're sitting in the meeting and Sylvia, as we were talking, they were talking about in Vogue and all this kind of stuff. I'm sitting there and I'm in the meeting, you know, I'm just taking it all in. I'm like a sponge, right? I'm like, I'm sitting here with the president. You know, she, and she was a very she was a very pretty lady, but I was just like, this pretty, petite, beautiful lady is the head. You know what I mean? It's like, 
she's and she's powerful, a sister right? too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I was thinking like, wow. And she was sitting in the chair, and I'm sitting like kind of off to the side, and she was talking to Tommy, Denny, and they're and, and Dave, and they had all these people in there, Van, her other A and R people, and they were talking about, yeah, we're gonna do this, this, and this, and she's like, well, that sounds interesting. That sounds very interesting. And I'll never forget this. And then she spent her chair around and faced me and said, now let's talk about the man with the golden voice, Samuel. <laughs> How you? What do you think? And I'm like, what do I think about what? You know, I'm like, think about what? Yeah. And she started talking to me, and I'm thinking, like, in my head, I'm going, calm. You know, I'm calm, but in my head, I'm going, like, this lady is talking to me right now. But I'm so, <laughs> so geared because of the way we were raised to just be able to respond accordingly and calm yourself down. Well, I think it'd be a great idea. You know, what I mean, looking forward to, you know, I'm being real professional. By this time, we had did so many interviews with so many different radio stations, and you know, what I mean, stuff that I'm I'm skilled at the art of interviews. So to me, I just handle it kind of like, you know, like you would that, you know, answer the question, don't elaborate too much, but <laughs> feel like, you know, I can, I can, and I said something like, you know, I would love to be here though. You know, I would love to be at Atlantic. You the head of Atlantic? Oh my God, I can just imagine, you know, I'm doing the charm thing. <laughs> thing I know, a couple of weeks later, next thing I know, they say, hey, we got to deal with Sylvia. She's going to sign us. Wow. So that's how we got on that. And I'll, you know, I'll never forget her for that. Like I said, the conversations. And when I was actually there, she treated me, she treated all of us, me and Vogue. And she was, she was very professional, man. Very, very professional and, you know, very kind. But she was hardcore when it came to business. But <laughs> as you as a person, she'd actually, like the minute when, so, when my single went number one, when So You Like What You See went number one, she called me at home that morning. Mm. I'll never forget. I was like, hello. She's like, Hey, Sam. I was like, Sylvia? She's like, yeah. She's like, How does it feel to have a number one single? I said, well, you know what, Sylvia? I've had number one singles before, but this is different. <laughs> I said, this is, you know, this is me. You know, this is Samuel. And I club Nouveau. This is Samuel. I said, so this is different. This is special. You know, she said, well, I told you. And she did. Because she came personally. When we were recording at Can-Am Studios, my album, she came personally to the studio to listen. You know, they have a listening thing. Mm -hmm. Usually they send A and R people and stuff like that, right? But she came herself. I was, I was like, silly kid. And they're just playing song after song. You know, she's like, oh, that's nice. You know, she's listening. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. And as soon as we got to So You Like What You See, do, 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 she went, hey, now we're talking. Do, do. Wow. And when it came on, every day now, I can feel you watching me. She said, that's it. I don't need to hear anything else. That's the number one single of the summer. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's what she said. That fast. She didn't even listen to So You Like What You See. She didn't even get to that far. She heard the first part of the verse and that groove, that new jack kind of mm -hmm. groove. And she said, That's it, Sam, get ready for a number one single. She says, As a matter of fact, as soon as you got, give me this right away, because I'm going to call Teddy Riley and have him <laughs> put a mix on this thing. What? Yeah. Again, that's why I say, I have no horror stories about the industry. <laughs> You know, what I mean, I, you know, sometimes, sometimes I'll be talking, and and you know, my wife will will talk about stuff, and you know, we hear all the different stories of different artists and stuff like that, and you're watching them on Unsung and all these different programs, and you hear them <laughs> on podcasts, and I look at it, and, and she just looks at me, and I go, "Babe, I've been blessed." I say, "Cause I have no horror stories." You know what I mean? It's just like it was one blessing after, another, you know what I mean? And you don't see it when you're in it, but you see it when you know you look back now, you go, "Wow." That was that was the Michael Jordan finish, you know, of games. You know what I mean? It's just like you go in, you do this, you do this. You finally get to go sit in on interviews or, you know, where they're pitching ideas to labels. And the, the one you go to is the one that they get. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like with the most powerful woman at that time in, in music. And then you go, she comes to the listening party, she's listening to tracks. And the first track that you're actually writing is the one she picks for the single. Hey, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. If you love what you watched, there's over 100 artists that we've interviewed. So please check out the videos. Remember to like, share, and not unsubscribe. But better still, become a member of Halftime Chat and get exclusive videos ahead of time. But thanks for watching. Take care.